So, hello everybody. Uh, I would like to give a talk about advances in searching for galactic axioms with a dielectric holoscope that is the MADMAX, and I'm going to give this talk in a, uh, on behalf of the MADMAX collaboration. So, a few words about the axion. As we know, it has a very small mass and uh, weak coupling to matter and radiation, but it's an elegant solution of the strong CP problem, and uh, it has been proposed as uh, its inverse Primakov or CKV effect that uh, we can have action photon conversion inside the strong electromagnetic fields. Action, besides, can naturally explain the observed dark matter and density, at least, or a part of it. And under external magnetic field, we know that it modifies the Maxwell equations. It is important to note that, uh, according to recent uh, simulations with adaptive uh, mass refinements, uh, in the post-inflationary scenario, we have a, re a range of action masses uh, preferred by a dielectric haloscope. That is the mass from 40 to 180 microelectrovolts. Um, so the idea, to remind some of you that uh, what is the idea of the dielectric haloscope, in case we have a cosmological action field uh, oscillates inside an external magnetic field, this can source a, a, a tiny action-induced electric field, which is, of course, very small, even if for, for 10 Tesla magnetic field. Because uh, the electric field is different in materials with different epsilon, um, we have a discontinuity that has to be resolved by traveling waves in both directions from a boundary condition because of the continuity of Maxwell equations. So uh, the parallel component of the electric field must be continuous at the boundaries, as we know. But the power emitted for such a case, even for one meter square meter uh, surface, is really small and uh, quite impossible to be detected even for the state-of-the-art detectors. So instead, the concept is to create a system composed by many dielectric disks uh, with um, separated distances uh, controlled in such a way that we can have coherent emission from multiple interfaces and, of course, make use of the constructive interference. In that case, the power induced uh, will be uh, multiplied by the power boost factor, as we call it, which is the power induced by such a device compared to the power induced by a single emitter. Simulations so far indicate that the power boost factor can reach values up to the 10,000 using 80 disks with a dielectric constant of uh, 24, which is the uh, candidate material for our case for MADMAX, and it is the lanthanum aluminate. Of course, it's good to say that uh, the, the boost factor is affected also by boundary conditions, ion accuracies, uh, disk mispositioning, and tilting that makes the experiment quite uh, challenging. So this is the idea. So we, have, we will have a ninth uh, Tesla dipole magnet uh, with a warm bore, uh, open, uh, in the open warm bore, uh, that the cryostat can fit in uh, inside this cryostat. We can have the booster composed by 80 adjustable dielectric disks of big surface, 1.25 meter. And there will be a mirror at one side to, uh, to, to make the, the waves, the actually induced electric field, uh, traveling towards the focusing ellipsoid mirror and then towards to the horn antenna or to the receiver system in general. So the main challenges of this uh, experiment is, of course, the booster mechanics, which is quite challenging to move uh, 80 disks inside the strong magnetic field, the magnet itself, and, of course, the receiver at cold and uh, inside this big, uh, strong B-field environment. We had, um, about the magnet, we had the uh, main challenges that we have faced them already. Uh, one of them was the reliable quench protection strategy, and uh, the second was the feasibility of uh, the conductor production. Uh, about, uh, about the quench propagation velocity strategy, we have implemented the MADMAX coil for quench understanding, which is the MACQ uh, test coil you see on the right, and the main project risk has been mitigated, and so we have quench, quench propagation according to re the requirements for safe operation in MADMAX. So the quench propagation and the quench velocity are according to uh, specifications for safe uh, operation of the MADMAX uh, magnet, which is very important for us. Uh, the MADMAX uh, Mad will be located and uh, designated uh, experimental site will be at DESI, and uh, it will be built in, in the Hera Nor Hall North. And uh, this is for making use of the DESI infrastructure. The benefit is to reduce uh, the H1 uh, yoke, uh, you see it on the, on the right, and we will have the shielding to reduce the fringe field uh, produced, of course. So about the time scale, we're in actually in the, in the prototyping phase, and we have already, I will show you later, first ALP measurements at CERN, and we will start the prototype commissioning in 2023. 
So the important news here is that we have uh, the, the ability to use the Morpugo magnet at CERN, and this has been approved by the CERN Research Board for the years 2021-2025. So how will be the, the MADMAX prototype? It's a, actually a scaled-down prototype of MADMAX, and it is composed by a booster with up to 20 dielectric discs of 300 millimeter in diameter. And this uh, cryostat has been already uh, purchased and will be delivered at CERN at uh, the end of this year or the beginning of 2023. We have also into, uh, into the design phase of the receiver cryostat. You see here it's a separate uh, cryostat with the ability to move uh, uh, the antenna inside and uh, will be flexible in use. Of course, we have also received the K-band antenna and uh, for optical system components are under construction. Uh, when we, uh, we install and commission this uh, prototype, we will be, in, 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 in case, will be uh, ready to demonstrate the feasibility of the key technologies for MADMAX, as also we will can start competitive ALP research with a dielectric haloscope. So, as I said, the idea is to start uh, initially commissioning and install the, the prototype cryostat inside the sealed experimental hole you see here uh, at DAISY, and then move it, transport it at CERN to make use of the Morpugo magnet, because our magnet, it, of course, needs a long time to be uh, prepared. So we can start physics runs at CERN at uh, 2024, for the years 2024 and 2025, uh, inside this uh, Morpugo magnet at CERN, you see here, which, which has, uh, that has a uh, quite uh, open uh, warm bomb, and we can put inside the, the Mad Max prototype. So, in case um, to understand uh, the, the test, uh, we have built many set test setups in order to assess the RF response uh, because of small changes or even inaccuracies of the system. Because, hardware, uh, because of the hardware, the hardware can potentially affect the boost factor I was talking about. Uh, so the prototype booster will be like this at the final, the prototype booster that will be operate in cryogenic temperature at 4K, high magnetic field, and of course it will be composed, as said, by single sapphire 300 millimeter discs or even tile discs made of three inches wafers of lanthanum aluminate. Uh, this, of course, uh, uh, contain some uh, uh, challenges that we have resolved uh, so far by, 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 by working on simple setups like the CB100, as we call it. It is a closed booster composed by single copper mirror, spacing ring, sapphire, the sapphire uh, disc of 100 millimeter in diameter, and of course a para parabolic taper that uh, goes to the, to the receiver system. Uh, there is a fixed uh, spacing, of course, uh, here. Of the, of the dielectrics, and the system, this system is optimized at 90 gigahertz. Next, we have already built the CB200, which is, it is based on the idea of the CB200, 100, and contains more than three discs, up to 10 discs of 200 millimeter in diameter. And, and then we, we move forward for RF uh, uh, searches with a, with a project 200, as we, as we call it, I will talk about in the next slide, which is an upper booster with a single copper mirror and a single sorry, dielectric disc of 200 millimeter in diameter. So here you can see the, the mechanics prototype uh, produced, uh, and we call it Project 200. And uh, it is composed by a copper mirror at fixed position and sapphire disc that can be in adjustable positions. Of course, the, the structure, the backbone, as we call it, of uh, the support structure, and three JPE motors of this type that can be assembled inside um, a carriage and this system, with these three carriages, we can move a disc in front of the copper mirror and with speeds more than 100 micrometers per second in cold and with positional accuracy of less than 2 micrometers in cold. So we have tested uh, successfully the, the piezo motors uh, and operate, they operated inside the 5.3 Tesla Alps 2 magnet at 5K. And uh, the Project 200 also successfully tested our CERN cryostat and a specific cryostat, as you can see, that is big enough in order to contain the Project 200. We also moved the Project 200 at 1.6 Tesla magnetic field of Morpugo magnet, and we saw that uh, the Articube laser interferometer works at cryogenic temperatures and also works in high magnetic field. So, important thing here is to notice that the Project 200, but the backbone structure, as you see here, maybe it's, it seems quite simple, but the structure is like that. The machine is so uh, very well uh, designed that keeps the optics alignment during cool down. So, because it's not something easy to create something to move discs back and forth in a system. So, there is a lot of research 
uh, behind this. Uh, the achievement here was that the disk can be moved with this accuracy. We need uh, with three motors using the latest interferometer feedback uh, module we have inside um, a strong magnetic field, let's say, of 1.6 Tesla, of course, and in the cryogenic environment. So, as said, because we're looking for the RF uh, behavior of such a system, which is an open system, we have extended, uh, we, have, we, we have the capability to use the Project 200 in, an, in RF studies, and like this, we can have, uh, let's say, a system composed by the Project 200, an ellipsoid mirror you see here on the simulation, and the antenna we have already received, and we can use uh, this system for reflectivity measurements after pro test prototype, the top prototype antenna, to estimate the losses or different ion accuracies. Let's say we can, we can tilt a little bit uh, the, the disk, we can make some measurement or simulations also with tile disk, etc. So the idea is to understand and verify the boost factor in this experiment. And uh, it's quite difficult and challenging um, because it's not some, the boost factor is not something that we can uh, directly measure. So we have performed indirect methods to calculate and uh, verify the power, the power boost factor we, we, we uh, calculate. So by starting by, project, by, by using the CB100, extended to uh, open systems like the Project 200, and next to the reduced, as we call it, or prototype booster, which is much more uh, complicated system, uh, we, we intensively uh, uh, make a reflectivity and noise power measurements. Uh, we have done already uh, these power measurements in the Colbert 100. And the important is that uh, system noise can give valuable information of the system response and, of course, of the boost factor itself. Uh, there is also a promising approach under investigation. You heard, uh, I think you heard that uh, two days ago. The reciprocity between the action-induced and the reflectivity-induced electromagnetic field. Um, so about closed booster simulation and measurement, as said, this system is composed by the receiver, the parabolic taper, and the three uh, compact disks at the specified position here. So we have performed extensive simulation that agree very well with the data. Let's say here in the group delay uh, plot, you see the, the main peak at close to 90 gigahertz uh, of this uh, structure. And it is closed in the sense that uh, it has very well defined boundary conditions so we can understand and somehow mitigate the transverse losses. So this system can also, it's important that can operate at cryogenic temperatures. And we, as you can see, we, can ha we have already good qualitative match between simulations and measurements. Uh, this system has been used already for first heat and photon cells in Mark Flag Institute. And uh, uh, I will show you results from first ALP cells in Morpugo Magnet at CERN. The, uh, uh, the simulation helps us to understand and, as I said, and uh, c calculate the boost factor, which is in the case, in this case of this system is about 2,200 uh, around uh, close to the 19 gigahertz uh, with a bandwidth of around 20 megahertz. Uh, in addition, we have performed uh, temperature um, measurement, uh, system temperature measurement with, uh, let's say, five room temperature measurements at different uh, center frequencies because of, uh, of the system we are using, the data acquisition system, the heterodyne data acquisition system we use. And we have also performed calibration system noise temperature with a noise source. And we observed that we see a dip in the system uh, temperature that corresponds uh, very nicely to the dip of the reflectivity measurements S11 you see in the orange uh, color. So like this, we have created 1D models and 3D models that agree really well with the simulation and the measurement. And like this, we can infer the boost factor using this model with parameters inferred from the thermal and uh, RF uh, reflectivity measurements. This setup has also used uh, the, the fake action injection in the preamplifier, of course, and a signal of 10 to the minus 2 uh, watts uh, could be detected uh, within a few days. So we had, as I said, uh, hidden photon search uh, 30, using uh, 32 days of data taking with a noise temperature of 200 Kelvin, and we observed no excess power, of course, so we were able to produce a preliminary uh, sensitivity plot, but this is also under um, investigation because we want, uh, we want to check the, the, the uncertainties and the power boost factor. And um, the, the, the plot shows uh, the, the sensitivity we can reach in the hidden photon phase space close to the 78 uh, mega, uh, micro electron volts. 
Same applies also, we had uh, uh, the chance to, to, to run the first ALP uh, search at, uh, uh, at CERN. You see here the DAC system transferred from our labs, uh, to, from the clean environment to the house environment uh, at CERN, as you know. So we had, of course, first measurements checking the, that the electromagnetic noise is not affecting our system. And then we had the closed booster system 100 inside the, the, the Morpugo magnet you see here. And unfortunately, because of uh, some renovation, sorry, some uh, installation of the, of, the, of the power converter of the, of the magnet, we have the ability to use only 10 hours of data taking at 1.6 Tesla uh, with the same noise temperature. And of course, no excess power was found. So we were able to produce the first preliminary result that is close to the cast limit. And we can tell you, if you, uh, uh, that um, the projected sensitivity with lower, uh, much lower temperature, I, we hope this will happen the next year, uh, even with four discs at the same uh, magnetic field, will reach, uh, will surpass the cast limit uh, at uh, this frequency range of, of action. So to, to say, to, to give you the big picture of, um, of MadMax, using the MadMax prototype with 20 uh, dielectric disc of 300 millimeter in diameter and in, uh, inside the Morpugo magnet of 1.6 Tesla, we have the ability to even to surpass the IAXO uh, limits. And of course, the final MadMax uh, experiment composed by 80 discs with uh, the big uh, surface at 9 Tesla and the same system temperature can reach the, 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 the QCD band uh, we want, of course. So to conclude, um, the MadMax prototype cryostat is important that will be delivered at uh, DAISY very soon. And uh, we have reached the major R&D milestones uh, we were, uh, yeah, and uh, of course uh, we have checked the feasibility of the Pietro actuators at 5K and 5.3 Tesla, which is very important for the operation of the MadMax experiment. And the mechanical concept of the MadMax baseline design has been verified through the Project 200 project. So the most, the highest technological risk for magnet uh, was eliminated by the Maku uh, test coil, as you saw. And uh, the booster is understanding is uh, well underway, we can say, and we, uh, hope and successfully we had f first physics uh, measurements with uh, close uh, with close booster 100 in Sermo Pugo magnet, and we are in the phase of analyzing the data and get and get uh, the most the, the 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 first results that we present here as a preliminary results, and we hope to publish real soon. Thank you. Can I continue? Uh, uh, thank you, Antonio. Sir. Okay, questions? Oh, thank you for that talk. Uh, I have one question about the boost factor estimation. Do you assume the uh, direction of the conversion photon from the mirror is perfectly perpendicular, or do you, have, uh, do you consider about the uncertainty? I cannot the... hear you very well, sorry. You, do you say that the magnetic field has to be parallel in the... Uh, oh, I, so, I'm asking about the, for the case of hidden photons. At least for the hidden photon case, it's not perfectly perpendicular to the surface. Are you saying about the directivity of the hidden photon? Yes, yeah. this I'm not so expert to explain right now. I mean, yeah, this uh, I cannot answer maybe. Uh, uh, the, 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 the transformation, I mean, uh, the, the idea is the same. I mean, even if you have a big wall, if, uh, like uh, I don't know, even a reverberation chamber, you can have uh, uh, photon, uh, hidden photon induced from the wall. So I think the directivity is not so important in that case. There are some studies, let's say from Alexander Miller, etc., that shows that we, we have to be careful and we have to take into account, let's say, the directivity or the where the location of the Earth, but this is not included yet in this uh, study. Uh, so my, my uh, my point is, so, you, so boost factor is strongly rely on the direction of the photon. I cannot hear you very well, sorry. Oh. Sorry, I couldn't hear anything. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> if it is okay for you, yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay, okay let's take what, one more. Okay, that's... Okay. Thank you for the talk. Okay, so I, I believe you know the the, the key, key of, of your experiment is uh, the, the boosting factor, which is going to be very you know, determined by the level of alignment in your discs. 
Yeah. And, then, and then you said that there is like a tolerance of two micron. Yeah, right? this is about the, the, the step uh, motor's uh, capability that yeah. we can improve. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. So basically, you, you expected, you know, uh, uh, the project, uh, expected, you know, um, uh, the boost the factor 40,000 uh, 40, is basically you, you also the concern. The boost factor the in our case is not uh, something like in the cavities. It's not something that uh, we want to resonate. This is, this is the case in the closed booster system where, where you have the, 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 the disc in a fixed position. When you are in the open booster case, when you can move, the disc is like, a little bit, the boost factor it takes a shape that it's a broadband. And this is our uh, main, I, I, I didn't notice that, this is our main goal. So we don't care a lot about if we have some. We just need to know where we are more or less with some inaccuracy. Thanks. Okay, if, it, if it's a quick quick question there, like just a quick uh, question if that helps. So, so thank, thank you for this talk. Along those lines, have you guys discussed using chirp stacks versus just like flat, uh, equally distributed Sorry. stacks. Can you repeat? Sorry. Uh, so so there, there have been these things that have been written about, I think, for lamppost, for example, where they're talking about using chirp stacks, where the, the, the distance between the layers is not exactly constant as you go through the whole experiment. So have yeah. you guys also talked about doing this? Or? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, we are, I don't, and I have a plot here to show you that we're scanning different action masses and we can cover the, the total band of K band, let's say, if we want. By moving the disks, we have, optim we have already algorithms that can specify the, the exact position of the disk. And like this, by moving it a little bit, they take some time in cryo, of course, uh, you can scan the whole range of interest. That's why we say we can cover this range. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay well, let's uh, thank the speaker again. So, thank you.